The threat of chemical and biological warfare against the United States Navy is a very real threat. Since most of the known chemical and biological agents can be classified as eye, respiratory, and digestive tract hazards, your best friend during a CBR threat or actual attack will be your MCU 2P series gas mask. The MCU 2P gas mask provides eye, respiratory, and digestive tract protection to persons in chemical, biological, and radiological, or CBR, environments. The mask has two voice emitters, one for face-to-face -face speech and one at the side for use with communications equipment. The mask is also equipped with a drinking tube to allow drinking liquids while in a CBR environment. The mask can be worn over combat spectacles and the large lens size of the mask gives the user a good all-around view which enables use of binoculars, gun sights, and other optical equipment. It is very important not to wear unapproved spectacles or contact lenses with your mask. Unapproved spectacles can cause a poor mask fit, which can lead to leaks. Contact lenses may adhere to your cornea after long periods of mask use, or they may fall out of your eyes. It is important that you understand the components of the mask and its operational characteristics so that you may properly protect yourself during CBR threats. The MCU 2P gas mask consists of the following components. The face piece is molded of silicone rubber. It forms an effective seal on the user's face. The lens is molded of an optically clear urethane material. It provides a distortion-free view and it is bonded onto the face piece. The head harness consists of six metal tip elastic straps attached to the face piece by tabs and buckles. A webbing head pad joins the straps together and holds them in the correct position. A quick don pull tab is sewn into the head pad. The nose cup is molded of silicone rubber and is located inside the face piece. It is attached to the front voice emitter housing and seals around the outlet valve. The voice emitters consist of two plastic discs in protective metal cases. They are located in the center and on one side of the face piece. The nose cup valves are two plastic one-way valve bodies with silicone rubber valve discs on each side of the nose cup. The inlet valve assembly is a one-way valve at the left side of the face piece behind the canister. It consists of a plastic air deflector assembly with a post-mounted rubber valve disc and a rubber valve body. The inlet valve assembly comes pre-installed on the left side of the mask. Only qualified personnel are authorized to switch the side voice emitter and inlet valve assembly due to the potential for leakage or failure of the mask. The outlet valve assembly is a one-way valve at the bottom of the face piece. It consists of a metal tube and valve body and a rubber valve disc. The outlet valve cover is a rubber cover which fits over the end of the outlet valve body. The cover has a pocket which holds the drinking tube coupling. The drinking tube is a rubber tube pushed onto a metal feed-through pipe on the outside of the outlet valve body. A quick disconnect coupling is bonded to the other end of the tube. An internal drinking tube is bonded onto a feed-through pipe inside the outlet valve body. The canister is a metal can which contains material to filter CBR and riot control agents from the air before they enter the mask. The canister screws into the inlet valve body. These canisters utilize a standard NATO thread. The mask carrier is made of mildew-resistant nylon. It has adjustable waist and shoulder straps. Pockets are provided inside and outside the carrier to hold other accessories. The waterproofing bag is a sealable plastic bag stowed in the carrier. It is used to protect the mask from moisture in wet and damp conditions. The outserts are optically clear and tinted polycarbonate shells. The outserts protect the lens from scratches when the mask is stored in the carrier. 
Outserts also protect the mask from chemical droplets and oil and petroleum products when the mask is worn. Clips at the top and a rubber strap at the bottom hold either outsert onto the face piece. Outserts are issued in two sizes, small and medium large, and are identified as such. You now have a better understanding of the components of the MCU 2P series gas mask. In order to ensure that your mask fits properly and that it operates correctly, there are several steps you must perform. The selection of the proper mask size is extremely important so that maximum protection is provided. The MCU 2P gas mask comes in three sizes, small, medium, and large. You may not be able to determine the proper size mask for yourself, since the most comfortable mask may not provide the most effective seal on the face. The proper way to ensure the best fit of your MCU 2P gas mask is to be fitted for one. Any 6-inch vernier caliper or dial caliper may be used, or one can be fabricated for use. Do not use a ruler or tape measure for this purpose, as they will lead to an inaccurate reading due to the contour of the face. Ensure the user is sitting erect with his head held level and his mouth fully closed. Place the fixed jaw of the caliper so that the lower part of the jaw is at the deepest point of the nasal root depression between the eyes. A person being fitted for a mask should take care to close their eyes to prevent accidental damage from the tips of the calipers. Place the sliding jaw of the caliper so that the upper tip of the jaw touches the tip of the chin. Read the correct mask size on the side of the caliper where the top of the sliding jaw touches the fixed part of the caliper. Inform the user of the mask size. If a vernier caliper was used for the mask measurement, refer to the chart in the mask technical manual for the proper size. The same procedure is also in effect when a dial caliper is used for mask measurement. Once you have been issued your mask and canister, you must go through inspection procedures to ensure the integrity of both items. First, remove the outsert from the mask. Then inspect the face piece for cracks, tears or deterioration and separation between silicone, rubber and the metal parts of the mask lens. Next inspect the face seal for cracks and tears. Run a finger along the seal to inspect for nicks or surface irregularities. The face seal should be soft, smooth and pliable. Check the forehead, temple, and neck tabs for nicks or rips on the ends of the tabs where the buckles connect. Run a finger around the curves where the tabs join the face piece to check for nicks. Inspect the buckles for bends, cracks, or looseness where they are molded into the face piece tabs. Pull on the head harness straps. Make sure the buckles hold the strap tight. Inspect the head harness for tears, surface dirt, and mildew. Pull the straps to ensure they have not lost their elasticity. Check the side voice meter retaining ring for corrosion or looseness. Check the voice meter for dents, punctures, or cracks. Ensure the four pins in the center face toward the outside of the mask. Hold the mask up to the light and check for light leaks at the voice meter. Inspect the front voice meter retaining ring for tightness using the tips of two fingers on the flat part of the ring. Check the front voice meter for dents, punctures, or cracks. Ensure the four pins in the center face toward the outside of the mask. Hold the mask up to the light to check for light leaks. Next, check the outlet valve cover for cracks, rips, and general cleanliness inside and out. Inspect the outlet valve disc with the plastic mesh support screen for curls, nicks, rips, dirt, or moisture. Turn the disc assembly to make sure it is not stuck to the valve seat. Smooth the disc assembly so that it lies flat on the valve seat. Place the cover back over the outlet valve disc assembly and ensure that it is seated firmly. Inspect the nose cup for cracks or cuts and check that it is sealed around the outlet valve flange and securely held around the voice meter housing. Also, 
inspect each nose cup valve body for separation from the nose cup. Ensure each nose cup valve disc is not cut or torn. Turn the discs with the tip of a finger to ensure they are not stuck on the valve seats. Next, inspect the external drinking tube for cracked or cut rubber and a dented, cracked, or loose coupling. Check the internal drinking tube for cracks or cuts and ensure it is not loose on the feed-through pipe. Check the inlet valve disc for curls or tears. Turn the disc to make sure it is not stuck to the inlet valve body seat or the air deflector. Ensure the inlet valve tabs on the inlet valve body are facing outward. Inspect the lens for stains or punctures or any sign of separation between the mask lens and the face piece. Next, remove the canister from its hermetically sealed can. Inspect the canister for cracks, dents, or holes around the seams. Remove the plug and check for dirt clogging the air intake and check for damaged threads. Shake the canister and listen for rattling, which will indicate a breakup of the carbon brick. Next, inspect the voice mitter mic mitter on the mask for dirt, bends, or cracks. Ensure it is not loose. Hold the mask up to the light and check for light leaks. Finally, inspect the outsert for general damage and scratches. Ensure the rubber strap and clips are present. Also, ensure the outsert is the proper size for the mask. You have now completed the inspection process for your mask. If you are inspecting the mask for training purposes, look for the installation date on the canister. Verify that the date does not exceed normal life expectancy. Now that your mask has been properly fitted and you have inspected your mask and canister, you need to adjust it so that it provides maximum protection in an emergency. First, screw the canister on the face piece. Hand tighten the canister. Next, loosen the straps of the head harness. Ensure the strap end tabs are approximately one inch from the buckles. Remove the outsert from the mask if it has not already been removed. Reverse the head harness by pulling the harness over the front of the mask. Hold the outlet valve assembly in the palm of one hand. Using your free hand, push your forehead hair aside. Place the mask on your face, forcing the chin cup very tightly against your chin. Pull the head harness over your head using the quick don tab. Using a circular massaging motion, push the mask as high on your face as possible. Look down at your nose to be sure the mask is centered. Hold the mask in this position with one hand until the temple straps are tightened. Check that the head pad is centered at the rear of your head. Switching hands, tighten one temple strap with small jerks until the mask feels snug on that side. Tighten the other temple strap in the same manner until both sides feel the same. Run a finger under each temple tab front to back to check for snugness and to remove stray hair from the ceiling area. Grasp a neck strap in each hand and tighten them with small jerking motions to the rear. Grasp a forehead strap in each hand and tighten them in the same manner. Make sure your chin remains seated in the chin cup so the mask will fit properly. Now shake your head quickly from side to side and then up and down. Retighten the mask straps as necessary. Now that your mask has been properly adjusted, you must check it for leaks. First, steady your mask and pull the canteen coupling out of the outlet valve cover. Grasp the outlet valve assembly with your thumb at the bottom and your forefinger at the top. Push your forefinger toward your mouth to get the internal drinking tube end between your teeth. Test the drinking tube for leaks by blowing into the tube. If resistance is not felt, the drinking tube is leaking. At this point, you need to either repair the mask or obtain a replacement. If either of these is done, mask adjustment and leak checks must be performed again. If there is resistance in the drinking tube, push the coupling firmly back into its socket. Press the palm of your hand over the end of the canister. 
Inhale slightly and hold your breath for 10 seconds. If the mask remains adhered to your face, the mask is airtight and will protect you from toxic agents. If the mask does not remain adhered to your face, adjust the temple and forehead straps to stop leaks at your forehead. To stop leaks at your cheeks, adjust the neck straps and ensure the head pad is centered on the high point at the crown of your head. To stop leaks at your throat or under your chin, lift the mask higher on your face to seat your chin firmly. Adjusting the forehead and neck straps may also help. If the previous procedure failed to stop the leaks, you need to either obtain a replacement mask or be assessed for a different size. Your mask is now properly fitted. Now loosen the neck straps by using your finger to rotate the rear of the buckle forward. Grasp the mask by the outlet valve assembly and remove it by pulling down, outward and up, and remove the mask. Then adjust the neck strap so the ends are within one inch of the buckles. Now replace the outsert and then pull the head harness over the outsert. Then place the mask in the carrier with a canister pointing down and the outsert away from your body. Before you don your mask, always perform these steps. Ensure the mask is in the carrier. Remove any unapproved eyeglasses or contact lenses and don only approved spectacles for use with the mask. Ensure there are no leaks in the drinking tube system. Ensure an outsert is attached to the mask. Finally, ensure the head harness is inverted over the front of the mask and the temple and forehead straps are pre-adjusted for donning. Now that you have ensured that your mask fits and is adjusted properly, let's go through the proper donning and doffing procedures should you be caught in a CBR environment. We will perform the procedures slowly, but you need to be aware that you must put your mask on quickly and before you take another breath. Toxic agents may be in the air and can cause sickness or death. The first steps you must perform before donning your mask in a toxic environment are stop breathing, close your eyes tightly, and remove any headgear you may be wearing. Grasp the carrier flap tab and pull the carrier open. Grasp the mask by the outlet valve assembly and remove it from the carrier. Hold the outlet valve assembly in the palm of one hand. Using your free hand, push your forehead hair aside. Place the mask on your face and force the chin cup very tightly against your chin. Pull the head harness over your head using the quick don tab. Grasp a neck strap in each hand and tighten them with small jerking motions to the rear. Now exhale. Press the palm of one hand over the canister opening. Inhale slightly and hold your breath for 10 seconds. If you have an airtight seal, open your eyes and resume normal breathing. If not, retighten the neck straps and verify the position of the head pad. You should recall from our discussion that it is important to get your mask on your face quickly in a CBR environment. Our sailor will now perform the steps to don his mask as expediently as possible. After you have donned your mask, if breathing becomes difficult, the indication is that the canister has become saturated and replacement is required. Sometimes you may assume that your mask is leaking near your left temple. This is caused by air rushing over the deflector assembly during normal breathing. It is an indication that you may have over tightened your mask straps. Use caution when tightening the straps to avoid this false indication. Also, if the lens fogs up, it may be an indication that the valves have dislodged. To doff the mask, if it and the environment have remained uncontaminated, 
Loosen the mask neck straps. Grasp the mask by the outlet valve assembly and remove the mask by pulling down, outward, and up. Now reverse the head harness over the mask face piece. Shake or wipe any moisture or frost accumulations from the inside of the hood and mask. Stow the mask in the carrier. The procedures for decontaminating the mask are as follows. Pair off with a buddy outside the contamination control area, or CCA, of your ship. One of you will open an M291 skin kit and remove one decon packet. Use the applicator pad to decon your own gloves. Then use the same pad to decon your buddy's mask. If an outsert is attached to the mask, it is not to be removed. Then the procedure is reversed. The other sailor uses his own M291 kit to decon his gloves and his buddy's mask. If the black resin from the M291 skin kit is making vision difficult through the mask lens, dip a sponge into a 1% HTH solution to wipe down the lens. Ensure that you wring the sponge out well. Drips from the sponge may contaminate your buddy's neck area. Again, reverse the procedure for the buddy. When mask decon procedures are complete, transit through the CCA and decontamination station for complete personnel decontamination procedures. When the all clear message has been given and it is verified through CBR sensors, you can remove your mask. Doff the mask by placing a plastic bag over your head. Grasping the mask by the canister through the bag and pulling off the mask, allowing it to drop into the bag. Here are some warnings you should be aware of when preparing or donning your MCU 2P gas mask. Check your mask for leaks when it is fitted and each time you put it on. A leaky mask will not protect you from toxic agents which can cause sickness or death. Do not hold the mask by the canister. A canister which has been handled can possibly become unscrewed, and an unscrewed canister is the most common cause of leaks into the mask. Remember, potential leakage or failure of the mask can result from attempts to switch the canister to the opposite side of the mask. The MCU 2P gas mask is not an authorized respiratory device for use during industrial operations. The filter canister will not protect against ammonia or carbon monoxide, and the mask is not effective in confined spaces where there is not enough oxygen in the air, such as a fire below decks. To ensure that you are using your MCU 2P gas mask properly and donning at the proper time, consult with your command's CBR specialist and or your engineering department for technical manuals and information on the MCU 2P gas mask. In this lesson, you have learned how to get your MCU 2P gas mask properly fitted, how to adjust your mask to properly fit your face, how to properly don your mask, and how to properly doff your mask in both uncontaminated and contaminated environments. If you follow all of the procedures presented in this videotape, you will ensure adequate eye, respiratory, and digestive tract protection for yourself during a CBR attack. This, in turn, will ensure that the ship's mission is uncompromised and that your duties will continue with little or no degradation.